So in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the testing of derricks and any kind of lifting appliances available on board uh, as per the requirements of the chain register. So I hope you have been watching my previous videos on cargo work where I have mentioned that a chain register is required to be maintained by ships that carry any kind of lifting equipment such as derricks or cranes and that are used for cargo operations. Any other derricks or cranes or um, any cranes that are used for picking up stores or any other operations in the engine room should also have a chain register. So details of the equipment, the blocks and the parts thereof are mentioned in the chain register. But today I'll be focusing more on the testing of the derricks and lifting appliances, what the chain register requires the mariners to do. This question is often asked to the mariners in the orals examination. So let's start firstly with the static test, which is only for periodic examinations. So a static test is carried out on a lifting appliance where they use only spring and a hydraulic balance. So a spring loaded balance uh, showing the stress in tons is fixed to a strong point on the deck. The derrick runner, the derrick runner is then attached to the other end of the spring loaded balance and the load is built up. The proof load is decided by a competent person. I'll tell you what is, what is the meaning of a competent person as well later on in the slide. Um, after the appropriate load is built up as indicated by the meter in the spring loaded balance, the runner is slacked and the derrick is thoroughly examined to see that no part has been damaged or permanently deformed during the test. A dynamic test on the other hand is carried out by using dead weight as per proof load decided by the competent person. So the competent person decides on a weight uh, and that is de decided as per the proof load, the weight that the crane or the lifting appliances should be able to lift comfortably. The proof load is hung from the derrick and the derrick is swung across the complete slewing angle. Uh, so that is the angle of movement and the lift and then lifted to the maximum and minimum topping angle with the weight. The derrick is then subjected to a thorough examination. So normally this uh, proof load is a slightly more than the safe working load or the SWL because they want to see if the derrick or crane is uh, strengthened enough to pick loads slightly higher than the safe working load. Although the safe working load is the minimum or rather the maximum load that the derrick or crane should be able to lift but they use the proof load which is slightly more than the safe working load. And what they do is they hung the, they, they hang it from the derrick and then they swing the derrick around to maximum angles uh, that the derrick will be swinging around maybe in operations. And then uh, they also use the maximum and minimum topping angle of the derrick boom. Uh, and then what they do is then they subject the derrick to a thorough examination to see if there have been any kind of impact of such movement or such weight or such stress on the derrick and its parts. Uh, some important points to note and remember is that during the test, the derrick boom is swung as far as possible in both the directions. I have mentioned that already. And uh, the vessel must ensure that uh, it has adequate transfer stability before it starts to do that. Normally cargo operations are not carried out during that testing. And the balance must remain constant at the test load for a period of at least five minutes. So for a period of at least five minutes that the load is hung from the derrick or the crane. Uh, I mentioned about competent person. So what is a competent person? A competent person means that a person possessing the knowledge and experience required for the performance of thorough examinations and tests of lifting appliances and loose gear and who is acceptable to the competent authority. So who is the competent authority? The competent authority means a minister of parliament, a government authority or any other authority empowered to issue regulations, orders, or other instructions having the force of law. In comparison to a competent person, what is a responsible person? Well, a responsible person means a person who is appointed by the master of the ship or the owner of the gear to be responsible for the performance of inspections and has sufficient knowledge and experience to undertake such inspections. Inspections means a visual inspection carried out by a responsible person to decide whether so far as can be ascertained in such manner the loose gear or the sling is safe for continued. The wire of examination includes uh, an examination at least once every three months and the wire rope is declared unfit if in any length of eight diameters the total number of visible broken wires exceed 10% of the number of wires in the rope. So think about it. Take the length of a wire which is equal to 
eight times the diameter of the wire rope. All right, and then inspect the wire, and then see how much how much wire is damaged. So if the total number of visible broken wires exceeds 10% of the number of wires in the rope, then you will declare the wire rope unfit. The frequency of examination will all lifting appliances. and every item of loose gear shall be thoroughly examined by a competent person at least once every 12 months the retesting and thorough examination of all lifting appliances and every item of loose gear is to be carried out after repair of any stress bearing part or in case of lifting appliances at least once in every 5 years a thorough examination actually means a detailed visual examination by a competent person supplemented if necessary by other means such as a hammer test carried out as carefully as conditions permit in order to arrive at a reliable conclusion of the safety of the parts concerned and examined if necessary for the purpose parts of the lifting machinery and gear shall be dismantled and checked for wear and tear lubricated and then assembled again finally i'll talk about the process of annealing and annealing as defined by the chain register uh, requires the metal to be heated to about 20 to 30 degrees celsius above the critical point and after being held for a while at this temperature the metal is then cooled slowly at a rate of about 50 degrees per hour now why annealing is done and why i'm mentioning it is because annealing of uh, any parts of the lifting appliances is done to impart some kind of softness and elasticity as well as ductility to the metal to relieve any internal stresses which may be present in the metal so that helps in the longevity of the metal the metal can sustain longer because when it bears loads it goes through stresses but the annealing process allows the metal to bear those stresses because it provides it with the elasticity and the ductility to bear the stresses so that's pretty much it so if you are ever asked about the examination of any kind of lifting appliances and its associated parts as per the chain register this is what you have to mention